Um, I hope you had a good but short break. And now we are continuing in the session number two with presentations from Luisa Gruvan, Hellas Gold and Hellenic Copper Mines. And after that, we'll have a, a presentation on exploitation and impacts by ISMO. And later on, questions to the audience that we want you to answer. And then we'll open the expert panel towards the end of this session. Uh, but first out will be my colleagues from Lovisa Gruvan, Jon Erik Björklund, and Matthias Svenlöv. And I know you're both not in the same uh, geographical position, so it will be a little bit of jumping back and forth between the two of you. Um, but Jan Erik, you're running the presentation, I think. Yes, I am. Yes. So welcome to start your presentation. Okay, thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. As you heard, I, together with Matthias Svenlöv, will present part of the work we at Lovisa Gruen has done in the X-Mine project. So, as most of you know, Lovisa Gruen is situated in Bergslagen, approximately. We don't see your presentation yet, Jan Erik. So. Don't you? One second. No. Better now? Not yet, but yes, now it's fully functional. Yes, please continue. Oh. Yeah, some of you have been here, but as you know, Lovisa Gruen is situated in Bergslagen, just 200 kilometers west of Stockholm. And it's an underground sink and lead mine that restarted his, its production in 2004. So it's it's a, a young mine. In the in the picture, you can see the mine area with the tent with the sorting with the sorter inside it here. And of course, the it's a small mine, as I told you. And I think it's the smallest metal mine, at least in Sweden. We are just 18 employees and six contractors. The production is about 76,000 tons a year, of which 40,000 tons are from ore production. And we are not lucky, but we haven't had any accidents with sick leave since 2012 and I hope it will continue with that. The mining method is a modified cut and fill mining. We produce ore between 145 and 235 meters level and the ore body is known down to 400 meters but it's it's open so it's not explored beneath that level or to the south. The ore reserve is about 600,000 tons with 9.4% zinc and 3.6% lead. So Lovisa Gruvan have participated with two pilot projects in the X-Mine, the drill core scanner and the sorter. And Matthias, who is the one who worked most with the projects, will present some facts from the green cross scanning and the, and the sorter. So please, Matthias, are you there? Can we start yes. your presentation here? Yeah, you have to change the side picture. Yes, hello. We can start here. For two years, we have had the drill code scanner here at Luisa Gruva. During this time, we have scanned almost 2000 meters Experiments of scanning fine crust rock samples wrapped in plastic foil and scanning materials from the sorter pilot project was performed. You can change next. Yes. Uh, this is the view of the mine, underground mine entrance and the crushing plant in, and the sorter in the foreground, as you can see. Next. Yeah. This is the flow sheet of the crushing and sorting plant at Lovisa Gruvan. We separate the Roman mine in two piles. 
the stockpile one we crush and separate into low grade and high grade material in the sorter. The stockpile two is very high grade, high quality ore, which is crushed and shipped directly to Boleslav in Poland without any further sorting. Produced fine materials up to 50 millimeters cannot be sorted and is shipped directly to customer. You can also see where in the flow sheet the samples are collected and there are four sample points. Yeah, thanks. Two times per hour, a sample of two liter is taken. These collected samples are downscaled and used for analyzing metal content and for stone counting statistics and evaluation. This flow sheet shows the average weekly production and how much of the sortable material can be separated from the low grade and high grade material. From 1000 tons run of mine, about 33% is fine unsorted materials. About 68% that can be sorted gives about 53% low grade and about 46% high grade material. Here you can see PPA and PPD is the collected sample points and uh, in the squares the calculated weight or whatever collected sample. Next. To evaluate the sorter plant's efficiency to separate materials, the downscaled collected samples is visually analyzed, weighted and counted into a low grade and high grade pile. To eva evaluate the plant's sorting ability, there are 120 samples taken. About 57,000 stones were analyzed, counted, and weighted. This takes the sorting plant about two seconds to perform. Uh, following seven diagram is based on counting stones and the content of high grade stones. It also represents the results from the sorting production since we're starting late 2019 to present day and with different setting. These results derive from 120 collected samples. There are all stones were counted and separated to the low grade and high grade stones. This is the baseline parameters. The gray line is the amount of high grade stones in the active separated low grade material. The orange line is the amount of high grade stones in the passive separated high grade material. And the black line is the percentage mass weight of separated low grade material. The input picture shows the different detected density of the stones on the conveyor belt. Next. Yeah. yeah. Here we see a test uh, active separate the high grade material. The black line of percentage weight mass of separated low grade is too much content of high grade material in the passive separated low grade. Next. Yeah, next. Uh, we make some adjustments in the crushing and screening production and try again to active sort the low grade. Next. More precise methods are de developed to get more reliable results of how the sorter separates the high and low grade materials. This is done by beforehand counted and painted stones and running this same material several times with different results. Parameters are changed during these tests. Still too much high grade material was lost in the separated low grade and we continue active sorting the low grades. Next. After evaluating all of the many tests and optimized settings of the sorter even more, 
we could run the sorting plant on the setting active sorting of the high grade material. With similar loss in high grade material in the separate low grade material. These settings leads to that we can separate even more low grade materials. This is the complete diagram uh, from start to present day uh, with the uh, trend lines. Now you can see it follow different settings. Next. This flow sheet shows the sorting and distribution parts from start to 2020. And as you can see, there are more low grade material in this flow sheet. And this is from 2021 with optimized settings. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Matthias. And I have a few slides left to go through. Uh, so in overall, we, we have been sorted the ore for 20 months now. And during that time, 39,500 tons have been sorted. 14,500 tons has been sorted as low grade material that we didn't need to, uh, we need to uh, fry it. <laughs> no, uh, it's still here in, in the mine. And 25,000 tons of sorted as product, of course. And of the total production we have, 60, 66% have been possible to sort. And the effect of the sorting, this chart that shows the, how much the grades have increased from the input of the material to after the sorting. The dashed line, the dashed red line is the grades of zinc. And as you can see, it's a couple of percent, but then when we started here the last six months to reject the product instead, we almost doubled the, the grades in, of zinc in the ore. And the blue one, it's the same, but we, yeah, it's around 2% higher grades in the, after the sorting. And of course, uh, when we started to do the reject the product, it resulted in a much higher part of blue gray material that was sorted out. And that's why the, the higher grades of zinc and lead in the product that we are shipping. And here is another chart that shows the improvement we have had on sorting out the blue gray material. The blue color area is the amount of blue grade material that we sorted out. So it's almost 50% here. Over 50% the last months have been sorted out as blue grade material. And if you look at the lines, you can see that the zinc and lead grades, the zinc grades here and the lead grades here in the blue grade material also have decreased substantially during this. So, they, so that's very good for us. So the, the grades of zinc in the waste rock or in the low grade material is now down to 1% approximately. And the lead grade is down under 0.5%. And here is the chart that shows the improvement we had on now. And, and this chart shows the impact of not transporting the outsorted low grade material. If we compare it to the start before we did any sorting, you can see that the amount of fuel we have, have decreased with 35% compared to before the sorting the project. So it's just, we are just using 65% of the fuel to transport the ore to Poland from the mine. So that's make in 20 months, we have over 80 cubic meter of fuel that we didn't have used 
and that's equal to 211 tons of, of car, carbon oxide a year. One minute, so Jan Erik. Yes. Hello. Are you hear me? We Hello, can hear Stefan? you, but just one minute left. Okay. Yeah. And the summary, the X1, if you have the summary, the X1 project has been very intensive, but we consider it as the most useful project we ever participated in. And of course, at the Visa Gruen, we are very pleased with the results from the sorting, and we see a further development potential with the sorter. And we are we are considering continuing with the sorter even after the project. We also see great benefits with the drill core scanner, particularly with the short lead time from the real core to delivery of results. That's a, a quick summary of what we have done, but we are still working with it and maybe we yeah, we have a couple of more months to try out some other algorithms. So thank you for um, Lovisa Guva for good cooperation, everyone, and hopefully see you in the future also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan Erik. And um... There is no time for questions now, but please put your questions in the in the chat. And can I ask Sofia Karampaliki and Vasilios Klepkos from Hellas Gold to prepare the presentation? I'm not sure who is running the presentation. Is it Sofia, perhaps? I'm running first, and then uh, Vasilios continue. Yeah, you're welcome to start. Okay, uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, yes. We see it in working mode together with your slides, so it's not full presentation yet. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. Is now I see it in full mode, thank you. Okay, so we will continue with uh, Hellas Gold uh, presentation. As we all know, uh, Greece is one of um, the pilot sites. Uh, the presentation will start with some uh, general information about uh, Mavris Petris mine, uh, the location, and the geology. Uh, subsequently, we will continue with uh, the drill hole scanner, some results uh, about the sorter and the uh, next steps. Uh, Mavres Petres Mine is located at uh, the northeast of Halkidiki in the Aristotle municipality. As we can see in the map, it's an area with a lot of villages. Uh, Stratoniki is in the east, Straton is in the east and uh, Stratoniki in the west. The mine sits along the Stratoni Fault Corridor and uh, on the map we can see uh, all the mine uh, facilities. A few words about the uh, geology. Uh, Mavres Petres is a structure control carbonate replacement deposit. Uh, the mineralization sits on the stratonic fall. It is localized along the east west striking south dipping uh, stratonic fall. Uh, Hannibal uh, is uh, mainly consi consisted of uh, amphibolite. Uh, West uh, football, uh, main lithology is marble. Uh, but we also have granitic gneiss and uh, biotite amphibole schist. Mineralization is uh, massive sulfides, and uh, the main minerals are pyrite, galena, and sphalerite. But there are also accessory minerals such as arsenopyrite and uh, rhodochrosite. We had one prototype of the GeoCore analyzer. It was located at uh, Adit 53 in Stratoni. By using uh, this machine, we add value to our work by identifying quickly and carefully all the drill hole geotechnical features, such as fractures, joints, lithology contacts, and we also obtained um, density measurements. By this way, a geologist's time 
can be allocated to other tasks. Uh, on the images, we can see the prototype, uh, the, the tubes with the core inside, uh, which are ready to be scanned. Now let's analyze some numbers. The project was held uh, on Mavros Petra's underground mine at level uh, 55. We had eight oriented, uh, oriented core NQ size drill holes, uh, in total uh, around um, 850 meters. Uh, they were drilled and funded uh, uh, by X-Mine project. Geological and uh, geotechnical uh, logging conducted on all oriented drill holes, and then they were scanned and imported into inside software. Uh, after this, uh, two drill holes were sent to our explorer again uh, just for uh, hardware upgrades. On the image, we can see the drill holes almost uh, looking south. And now let's analyze uh, this table. When conventional geological and geotechnical logging is conducted, one geologist can complete about 100 meters in about two hours. For the detailed geotechnical logging, calculating alpha and beta angles, two geos are needed to exceed 100 meters uh, in two days. That quickly means 24, 25 meters per day per person. At the same time, with uh, core scanning, we have four meters scanned in 90 minutes and one geo, uh, geologist is needed. So in a working day, 24 meters can be scanned and the other uh, geo can be allocated to other duties. Um, as we said, uh, we had all uh, the geotechnical data, contacts, faults and joints. They were digitized and then imported into LeapFrog for data interpretation. On the images on the left, we can see some stereo nets created on, on LeapFrog. Joint sets were divided by the main lithologies, uh, mineralization, marble and schist. On the right hand, uh, we can see inside software and environment, which is really easy and user friendly. And uh, we can see an interval uh, with a digitized contact between a barren lithology and a mineralized one. About the assays, XRF analysis includes a wide range of elements, uh, including critical metals and uh, rare earth elements, but uh, we have no gold assays yet. XRT and the table with a number of display options can highlight areas uh, based on the atomic number of uh, the elements. About the density results, um, in Mavis Petra's mine, we used fixed density. Historically, we used fixed density values: 2.7 for waste and 4.2 for mineralization. Uh, density data from the geocore analyzer were compared with the historic measurements, and uh, the, the results were valid validated. So, with the help of LeapFrog uh, software, we created a box plot graph, which is a, a visual visualization of the data, and uh, displayed density and data by lithology. As we can see in the image on the right, um, its color is a different lithology, and we have two red because we have two different codes for mineralization. MZ is for massive, massive core, and MG is for the gauge one, which is in a bad geotechnical conditions, and it is really usual in Mavro Spider's mind. If we can see the numbers, they are really close with the fixed density values. After this, we evaluated this data in a 3D density model, which uh, was created uh, with inverse distance estimation, and uh, then assisted this to the resource block model. Next step is to incorporate uh, the produced density model to our monthly in reconciliation process, comparing the mine and the mill output. Uh, now Vasilis is going to continue uh, about the sorter. Uh, Vasilis, do you want me to change the slides or are you going to uh, share? 
Please stop uh, sharing, Sophia, and I'll share from my computer. Okay, and you have about six minutes, Vasilios. Okay, okay. Vasilios, you can continue. And, and we don't see the full screen yet. Yep, now we can go. Thank you. Okay, just a minute, please. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, hi to all. Uh, I'm Vasilos Klepkos. I am a mining engineer and uh, I'm working uh, in a large gold as a production engineer in uh, the Stratoni mill. Uh, I'll uh, have a prepare a presentation about uh, our uh, operation of the sorting machine uh, in a Stratoni plant. Okay, uh, such an introduction, uh, the sorting uh, machine is a multi or X-ray sorting system. Uh, has a vibration feeder for the feed of the material, a high speed conveyor belt, an X ray cabinet with X ray source and 3D camera, online analysis and separation module. This is in this table described all the progress in uh, last gold uh, after uh, delivering of the uh, sorting machine to uh, last gold facilities, uh, facilities. Uh, the installation of the C container and the uh, conveyor belts, the commissioning of uh, uh, the container and uh, the training of uh, uh, the operators and the test work, uh, test work design. Uh, the sort of machine delivered in the last gold uh, on uh, January of 2020. Uh, according to the schedule plan, uh, we expect uh, uh, the sort of machine in the facilities on uh, June of uh, 2020. So we are not uh, prepared uh, for, his, for this delivering, but uh, this is the reason we have some delays in order to uh, complete the installation. Um, this is the sorting installation uh, area. Uh, we install uh, the sorting machine above uh, the crushing plant in the stockpile area uh, and uh, this is a general arrangement of uh, the installation of the sorting machine uh, in a topo survey uh, map. As I said before, uh, the sorting machine arrived in the last gold on January 2020 delivered by two trucks and unloaded uh, with a crane with uh, 60 tons uh, capacity. Uh, per charge uh, uh, requisitions created uh, for uh, new conveyor belts and uh, hopper in order to have operation of the uh, sorting machine. Uh, the storage area was uh, at a height of uh, 61.5 meters uh, from the sea level next to the crushing plant and in a distance uh, about uh, 250 uh, meters from the exit point from the crushing plant. We use uh, front loader uh, for the feeding of the sorting machine uh, three new conveyor belts and uh, this is inside uh, the photos inside uh, our crushing plant uh, that we take uh, the crushed materials uh, was prepared uh, for the for the sorting machine uh, with the size analysis uh, 
20 to 50 uh, millimeters from the tertiary crushing of the Stratoni crushing plant. We uh, buy uh, heavy duty compressed there uh, due to the needs uh, of the operation and uh, according to the needs uh, of a good uh, separation of the nozzles. Also, a dust collection system was installed in order to not have dust in the atmosphere from the exit point. Due to COVID-19 restrictions decided uh, that the commissioning and training of the operators uh, have to uh, be uh, done uh, remotely. Uh, with the uh, cooperation uh, of uh, COMEX people, uh, we made uh, all the initial uh, tests in order uh, to uh, uh, learn uh, the operation uh, of the machine. And uh, after uh, July of uh, 2020, we start uh, the first uh, tests in the in the plant. Okay, our uh, pilot goals uh, for the sorting machine uh, is uh, to uh, create a product and the waste uh, and uh, in the product uh, we expect uh, to have uh, high grades uh, stones and in the waste uh, uh, not to have uh, our usual minimal minerals inside to have uh, at uh, high level 0.5 percent lead and zinc in the waste uh, rocks. Uh, the pilot goals uh, uh, described uh, by increase the productivity, energy consumption, uh, deleterious elements, reduction on concentrates, uh, treatment char charges reduction, uh, higher grade uh, on concentrates. Uh, okay. The operation progress, uh, we start uh, first, uh, first uh, tests uh, in the plant, but uh, we don't have uh, good results uh, of separation. Uh, the reasons uh, was uh, due to a lot of fines in the uh, feed material and the uh, mud uh, in some cases, we don't achieve our uh, goals. So we, after uh, discussions with COMEX people and uh, with uh, Roland Horak, we prepare uh, uh, two special uh, sizing programs in order to achieve uh, uh, our uh, targets. So we feed, uh, we prepare uh, material uh, uh, from the tertiary crushing of the mill uh, with uh, size analysis uh, 0 to 60 millimeters and we feed uh, the sorting machine. We get out uh, all the fine fractions 0 to 10 uh, millimeters and we keep uh, uh, only the two materials uh, with size uh, analysis, the first one 25 to 60 millimeters fraction and the other one 10 to 25 uh, millimeters. So sorry, we... Sorry to stress you, Vasilios, but time is running out. Okay, so we run uh, the, uh, the sorting machine with these two fractions and in the tables below we show the results. Uh, in the results, we have a good separation uh, between uh, two products according uh, to our needs. Uh, we don't achieve the target in the waste uh, rocks uh, to have uh, below 0 0.5 uh, grade of uh, lead and zinc. 
and uh, we achieve all, also one more target to reduce the deleterious elements of the product in the concentrate, in the product uh, material. Uh, also, we made uh, another test uh, similar. Also, there we have uh, good results uh, in separation. We don't achieve uh, also the target, the target of the waste rocks, and uh, we have reducing of deleterious elements in the product grade. After the finish of the tests, we prepare. Uh, the loading of a uh, sorting machine with uh, two trucks delivered with the uh, delivered uh, to uh, as a element that uh, mine uh, on uh, february 19th of uh, 2021 that's uh, for me thank you very much thank you uh, we don't have time for any questions now, so instead I ask Georgios Kalogeropoulos from Cyprus. Can you please prepare your presentation? And Vasilios, if you stop sharing. Or Sofia. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Welcome, Hello. Georgios. And you have about 15 minutes for your presentation. I'll remind you when you're halfway through. Well, please get started. Right away, Stefan. So I believe you can. I see. Yeah, full presentation mode. Please continue. Welcome. OK, my name is uh, Georgios Kalogeropoulos. I'm a mining engineer and I'm the CEO of Hellenic Copper Mines. I will try to present in a nutshell our work here in Cyprus for the X-Mine project. Uh, so, uh, Skorgiotis, where we are located now, is in the northwest of Cyprus, and the Apliki area where the deposit of interest are located of, uh, are seven kilometers west of Skorgiotis. Here is Skorgiotis, here is, is Apliki area. So in the Apliki area we have two in situ ore uh, deposits. Here you can see the Apliki pit deposit and the geological uh, block model with uh, its uh, copper deposits. Uh, the Apliki pit deposit is uh, mostly exploited VMS deposit and what's left is stockwork and Disseminated mineralization. Uh, Georgios, uh, you're still on the first slide here. If that's intentional, I don't know, but. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, why is that? Uh, okay. Now, is it okay? You can see my. No, it's still the first slide, slide number one. Okay, now we have a topographic map, and here's a block model. Ah, uh, it has some, okay. So uh, that's about the Apliki uh, uh, pit deposit. Now, uh, the West Apliki deposit, which is the deposit uh, uh, that we scanned the samples, is here, the West Apliki deposit, and the geological block model of the West Apliki. This is a greenfield uh, deposit. That means no extraction has been done. Uh, but uh, uh, through the years, they, we've drilled uh, many drill holes there, mostly with RC drilling. It is a low-grade deposit, but it's highly oxidized with uh, stock work and disseminated mineralization. On the upper part, you can see that it's, uh, you can see Gaussian oxidation. In the, in the lower parts, we have the stock work zone uh, with the copper uh, minerals, with copper minerals. minerals so a little uh, some things about the drilling campaigns. They were done in 2019, 2020, and 2021, some of them. During August 2029, uh, we drilled with RC drilling uh, in West Apliki, in total depth of 
126 meters. Uh, and drill chips were sent to our explorer for scanning. Uh, during September and October of 2019, uh, core sampling was carried out at various geological sites, faults, Gosan, and Stockwork around the Apliki deposit. We collected their core samples, uh, but as you can see, the, the host rock was altered and friable, so the length of the cores of them were shorted were short 30, 30 centimeters. About 70 samples were collected and were sent to our explorer for analysis. Uh, we we plan uh, we made some uh, we sampled also another deposit not in in Skuriotsa, but in Mathia, in Mathiatis area which is near Nicosia. Uh, the Strogilos in situ ore deposits, it's a gold, de gold deposit. Uh, it's a Gosan type gold deposit near Mafiatis village. Uh, here you can see the, the Strogilos uh, pit where we drilled some samples for, for gold uh, during April 2020. There were 100 samples. And uh, about 100 samples were collected and were sent to our explorer in order to be scanned with a gold version of scanner. Uh, during the su uh, summer and autumn 2020, 100 samples were taken again from West Apliki area, but a total now 352 samples uh, were collected and were scanned with a scanner that uh, our explorers sent us here. Uh, you can see a Google map of the drilling campaign and where we had 14 areas of uh, sampling. This is the 13 areas and one area outside the deposit. Here is the deposit of West Apliki. Uh, this uh, uh, every, uh, every area was divided in subcategories according to the rock type and lithology. And you can see here some dots with the sub subcategories of each area. And a map of samples, of all the samples in the Apliki deposit from the areas and sub areas. Uh, here you can see from each area how many samples we've collected and the dates. So, uh, you can see now from uh, sub uh, from area one, different color in the ID of the cores. Uh, it's different sub area on the maps, it, which indicates it as, as I said, different rock type. The cores are scanned per area, and the different rock type of the cores are separated then in the scanning procedure. Uh, and during the scanning campaign, the exact position, of course, of the course in the tubes was, was registered. So, this is uh, a scanning form, and uh, you can see how the registration of samples in paper was made. Uh, the sub areas were distinguished by uh, ping pong poles. Some photos of how the procedure was done. And then uh, we've, we've made photos of the samples and the sequence and placement that you before the scanning procedure in a, in a file where we have sub area, a number, we have the number of each sample in the order that we scanned, and some other like porosity. So you can see as an example the inside results from uh, area one, for example, where we have the concentration map here and the densities. And in Excel, the results. Uh, where we have some elements here like selenium, titanium, vanadium, yttrium, BPM, zirconium. So, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, uh, some of the samples we decided to 
to make some analysis with portable XRF measurements to compare the results with the scanner. And the results of the scanner via the portable XRF was that estimated density uh, was overestimated, especially in the, sam uh, in the samples from the Gaussian part of the ore body. Uh, the copper percent had a good estimation, especially in the mineralized lava samples, which is what we aim for. Uh, iron, we had a, a, an iron underestimation by a factor of five, sulfur overestimation, and calcium overestimation. Possible reasons for the differences, it was different in geology and mineralogy with the other mines. Lands are amount of porosity, especially in the Gaussian samples. And perhaps the mineral list in the database of the scanner via the real mineralogy. Uh, we took some measures of obtaining better results. We've input a, detail, a, a more detailed mineral list in the software of inside. Uh, we had the input of porosity for every sample in the sub area. There was a calculation made by our explorers based on the above. And we extracted uh, the results for every different sample in sub area in Excel, which is, was a little bit tedious. And the outcome of results in a database of every sample in the sub area, which you can see here, not for all the samples, of course, for a part of the samples. Uh, with the elements here. So, uh, about the recalculated results of the scanner, we had a better estimation of the estimated density, especially in the Gaussian samples now, but we had uh, underestimation of copper, which was a bad thing. Uh, we had better results for iron, but still underestimated. We had a bigger overestimation with sulfur, and we had similar results with calcium, where we had overestimation. Again, possible reason for the difference, the difference in geology and mineralogy with the other mines, and methodological reason, mainly because of the high values of the preferred elements in Gaussian-like silica, where we have 30 to 80 percent of silica oxide. So about the results, uh, or explore geocore analyzers adds value uh, by identifying quickly non destructively drill hole geotechnical features such as fracture joints, lithology contacts, and obtaining, and obtaining good density measurements. A significant, uh, it's significantly time efficient as geologists' time can be allocated to other tasks. And using the drill call analyzers. Analyzer, especially in West Apliki, there was evidence of some rare earth elements or unforeseen chemical elements like vanadium selenium in West Apliki and some barium in Mathiatis, which could redefine the ore body and lead to changes of the process for this type of ore. Here you can see the map of West Apliki, we have some uh, lots of barium and yttrium, especially here. The distribution of some selenium in West Apliki and strontium in many of the cases of here in West Apliki. The regulation results showed us that the input of porosity did not give better results, but the input of the improved mineralist in the software did. And the second rerun from our explorer was made, which gave better results with the new improved mineralist. Uh, the results of the rerun encouraged us to drill. Uh, three drill holes in depth with diamond core drill holes totaling above 400 meters. These cores from these holes are currently scanned with the upgraded software of World Explorer in the scanner here in Spugliotza and the upgraded mineralist and that are important and processed with inside software as we speak. And the chemical analysis data from the scanner will be compared with ALS chemical analysis. And for future work, uh, it's a more experienced you uh, 
uh, will use the results for a better geological improved 3D model of West Apligi uh, with the earth, earth elements that I've said before. Uh, and we, we still are, uh, will do the scanning of Mathiatis Strogilo samples with a gold scanner and modeling of Strogilo's mine. So thank you for your attention and thank you all partners and colleagues for your guidance and help. Uh, I think being a part of uh, this project was a blessing. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for those nice words, George. Uh, excellent. Um, and we'll save questions for later. Um, and now I would like to have Ismo Ruhomäki, that's going to talk about exploitation and impacts. So Ismo, can we have you as a presenter and start sharing? Uh, yes, hello everybody. This is Ismo Ruhomäki from VTT. Can you see my slide now? Not yet, but we have a nice picture of you, which is a good start. But okay, uh, see Let's if you can see. share your presentation. What's wrong now? See here. Sure. Yeah, something yeah. is starting to happen now. Yeah, I now see it in working mode, and now if you can get it to full. Okay. Here we go. Excellent. Welcome. So let's let's get started. So I joined. Uh, so my name is Ismo Ruhamaki, and I joined uh, this X Mine project somewhere in the middle of of the duration of the project, and uh, the the. Duty was to take care of commercialization, exploitation, ecosystem, and impact related studies in Xmine project. And uh, the background for my duties in VTT has been working in this kind of issues. And of course, this kind of duty for was quite excellent for me. So let's go to the highlights of this uh, work, what I've been doing in Xmine. Well, there will be two topics, X-Mine exploitation related insights and uh, those impacts that are possible by exploiting those results and products and services we are creating in the mining industry and wider in, in countries and areas dependent on, on minerals extraction. And the time is limited. I'm going to going only to highlight some key topics during that work I've, I've been involved. And I'm going only to focus on those, how to say, key applications we are we have been dealing with, not all the results that are nicely listed in the IPR registry. But of course, there need to be those commercial key things bringing to the market as soon as possible when the project has ended. So let's get to the hardcore technology. I'm not going to repeat anything that was said already uh, sometimes during these presentations, but the, I'm, I'm, I'm a technology believer. And for being successful in the commercial side also, it needs that they are, there is added value through the technology we have developing. And it, in this case, we have now demonstrated that this truly added value in scanning and in sorting uh, through solutions in industrial use. And uh, we have been discussing about those activities with a geologist work in exploration or in mining case. It needs to relieve those pains those uh, people are suffering in their traditional way to work. And now we have been demonstrating the benefits in trials. And, uh, and, and after that, we need to demonstrate the practical benefits and gains in use in real life. And I guess that is a normal thing that customer, uh, uh, the companies who bring these solutions to the market 
know and, and of course obey this kind of rule that references tell a bit more than something uh, <clears throat> that are not that, that are far away from from customer world. So uh, thinking about the output from business point of view, now we have listed there all these scanning and 3D modeling use cases, and there are five of them. Of course, the key uh, use cases, field exploration, scanning and core locking, and there are also others like improved block modeling, 3D modeling. We could utilize this technology for historical real core scanning and re-evaluation of them if we do know where should be those most tempting and potential areas to exploit when we have technology to go with the how to say low grade stuff that are being stored there. Uh, we have now seen that we could use scanning also for sorting optimization and uh, uh, this we have seen that we are nicely also digitalizing the core locking process and perhaps also the wider processes could be digitalized by utilizing the full potential of this data. And this mind to mill integration services was, I guess it was a result from some from, from industrial workshop where somebody suggested that could we utilize this kind of data also in this kind of purpose. And the sorting use cases are the basic one is sorting for extraction and secondary extraction if there are potential piles available. And as Jacek already, I think, mentioned that the, the uh, clever use that uh, you sort out those harmful or penalty elements of the material stream should be also beneficial in, in mining, but also in some other areas of industry where the perhaps a negative value material could be upgraded, then there is value in that, for example, for construction purposes. And uh, in the below, uh, there are the most potential ways to bring the solutions we have been developing to the market. As usual in the Horizon funded, there's a five point list what kind of use uh, cases that typically are with the result, but making and selling new equipment with X-Mine technology. Providing services that the potential customer should might need in, in the whole life cycle of utilizing this equipment we are providing for them. And in Orex Plus case, they probably don't right away sell these equipment, they uh, most probably they sell services with or without operator. And uh, that is also quite good way to bring the technology to the customers. You might do also amenability or feasibility studies in some cases, and this optimization services is, is looking for the future opportunities by by providing also that kind of services. A licensing, in my opinion, might be a vital option to consider also if there is, how to say, huge demand ahead of those companies who are bringing the solution to the market. And we haven't been dealing with transferability studies, but there are uh, inside mining also scaling potential to all those mining types or to how to say high volume mining where the band width is large or whatever the situations are. But I think as I saw in the uh, Jacek presentation that there is the red color industrial first equipment ready for the market or is it some kind of mining fair perhaps coming there will will we will able to see that equipment on the market route. But let's go forward. Uh, in Horizon funded project, this kind of uh, business modeling studies have been 
nearly compulsory nowadays, and I have been used this business modeling, business model canvas studies, business model environmental mapping and value proposition design do, tool, which are those basic tools. And uh, this enables easy tool to make some kind of questions, what could be the building blocks or this kind of applications when it's brought to market. And in XMind case, this is not needed because there are, how to say, lead business owners, COMEX and OREXPLO, uh, highly determined, and they have, they're both customer clientele available, they have already assets, they have already product portfolio, and this new application should be integrated to the already existing portfolio and all the assets that are needed for making the uh, product offering possible for customers. And in this case, we didn't need to, how to say, make studies that are all the building blocks in place uh, that makes the business model possible. So, but there are these business models ready and they are validated and, and, and they are ready to go on with these. So, the one tool I mentioned is the business environment and mapping and, and this is highly important to, uh, how to say, discuss and go through with the whole project consortium, because we need to have the same kind of understanding what is happening in the market where we are operating. And the only thing is that if we have the base our business model and then there's the environment that is changing all the time. And if I remember something that has been happening in mining industry is that, for, was it Tesla who just recently came to publicity that they informed that they have creating partnering with, was it some kind of nickel metal providing company for ensuring that they have these critical metals for their car batteries. And this kind of changes have now come to in, in our vision that there is electrification needed and new metals will be needed for the green energy, whatever. And there are many kind of changes ongoing all the time and a key point in here what I want to say is that the only thing is flexible is your business model and we you need to be prepared to make how to say quick adjustment to your business models if you are not able to sell physical products you need to be able to think what about if I lease our solutions and make some kind of trials and try to get to the market by utilizing this kind of approach. Sorry to stress you now. Yes. yes. No. If you can finish in just a couple of minutes, would be great. Thank you. Yes. So I jump to the impact part of this presentation, and as you see, there's the generic in impact activities, output outcomes, and impacts. Uh, generic results saying we have been doing in XMind project these first activities, and now we are intending the, with those outcomes to the markets. There we have those uh, activities we can influence. And uh, there has been discussions that, that the consortium would like to see each other also after the process, but we will fix that thing in the, in the next few months. And uh, we have been working with the uh, impact chain and with those use cases and with the a participatory process, we have made some kind of prediction and what could be those foreseen outcomes when these uh, solutions are widely in use within industry. And the operational and cost reduction is the main benefit for companies. And that is the, how to say, that gives beef for the companies. But we believe that we can contribute uh, to the restart of inactive mines, contributing marginal or exploitation, contributing also prospecting, and contributing also in some cases to start up of new greenfield mines. And together, these impacts, uh, we could have some kind of predictive indicators for economic, societal, and environmental 
uh, changes by country level what we have promised to do in the research plan. And uh, as an insight, what are those indicators uh, status at the moment? There are some examples here that are quite, quite typical stuff that change in domestic metal extraction volume, change in mining sector, share in GDP, in, in created new jobs, in created new jobs in the value chain. And we have also tested the EIP uh, material scoreboard indicators, which are a bit higher level, but as you see on the right hand side down image that those yellow dots uh, uh, resemble that there are quite many areas that this technology we are de de developed can have positive benefits. So this is the my uh, ideas what I want to say as a conclusion I want to say that commercial things need to be uh, processed early enough in a, this kind of project and this has been good opportunity for me. But before we go to the um, panel discussion, I would like to give you an opportunity that look at the chat now. There should be available ex mine finally, but how to say participant questionnaire with only two questions. And uh, please give your response there now so we can have those answers in the in the final phase of our project. Very good, Ismo. That, thank that you. That was on behalf of my. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And if you look in your chat now, Maria has just posted a, a link to a form where you have these two questions, just two questions. So please answer them. At the same time as you do that, we'll ask Janne to introduce the, the panel. Uh, so Janne, yes, please. Yes, um, so we have uh, now the expert panel discussion and uh, because uh, we are running a little bit uh, behind the schedule, let's go directly to the introduction. And uh, so we have uh, five expert panel members here discussing. The first one is uh, Dr. Mark Rakovides. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, but uh, he worked as the president of the Euro Mines in, in Belgium. And uh, then we have Dr. Jason Young from GTK in Finland. He works as a chief expert there. And uh, then Mr. Paul McDonald, a specialist a geologist uh, at Boliden in Sweden. And Professor Kamen Bognanov from Sofia University in Bulgaria. And Dr. Nikolas Arvanitidis, uh, who is an economic geologist at SGU in Sweden. And uh, the discussion uh, topics for this expert panel discussion include the uh, use cases for the record scanner and use cases for the mineral source and what kind of use cases do you see for those? And uh, how do you see the role of uh, geologists in the future? And uh, then the fourth uh, topic is the benefits of the, of the X-Mine technology for the European mines. And uh, um, Marco Rakovides, could you please uh, start uh, with your comments? Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been an extremely interesting afternoon. And my compliments to all of you that have participated in this extremely interesting and valuable project. Um, a few words, firstly, about Euromines. Uh, I'm sure most of you know who we are. Uh, Europine, Euromines is the uh, recognized voice of the European mining industry. Uh, we are the recognized counterparty of the industry in terms of European institutions, and we are very happy to work with them and with the member states and at a national level through our members. Uh, we have 34 direct members, both companies and national associations, so therefore indirectly our, our true membership is well over 100 institutions and companies. Um, we cover about 40, perhaps 42, 43 commodities, um, and I think we, we, we are in a position to speak for um, what 
the industry would like to do in Europe in the future. Um, and one of those things is to communicate its progress and its technical efficiency far more effectively. And I think projects like this are absolutely essential to that. What we face today is what some people call a cognitive dissonance. People understand we need a green deal, we, need, we have a technological revolution in our hands, and we need raw materials to make that happen. But at the same time, there's deep concern, as voiced by NGOs and others, for the effects of mining and other industries on the environment. And therefore, any technological development that can be easily understood, and X-Mine can definitely be easily understood by the man in the street or the woman in the street, any, any technological development that says we don't have to use so much energy, we don't have to use so much land, we can do things in a much more controlled, verifiable, and environmentally transparent way is good for the future of our industry. I, my job is to tell people that Europe has the highest standards in our industry, that we like rocks, we like machines, but we like people as well, and we don't necessarily like money first. The perception of our industry is different, and projects like this, in my opinion, set the path for the continued successful future of our industry in Europe. Jonah, thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was a really important point that you made. made. And uh, I would like to hear the comments from, from Jason Young, please. Okay. Thank you. First, I, I want to thank you for uh, invitation. I actually, it's uh, uh, very good uh, today, very good uh, event, very good uh, 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 final meeting. So I want to thank for all the presentation, very good presentation. And then a couple of uh, points I want to mention related to your uh, questions. First about uh, the, mainly about because I'm working in the mineral procession, I mainly want to address some some point about uh, uh, ore sh uh, sorting. So definitely uh, ore sorting uh, becomes uh, more and more important. The reason is uh, the ore grade from, uh, the, uh, from the mine globally, every year, every day, it become, uh, becomes uh, 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 lower falling. The mark, uh, ore grading uh, steadily falling. So this cause a uh, process uh, cost, energy and uh, water increase. So it is short shorting or pre uh, concentration becomes more important. And at, at the same time, uh, over texture futures become uh, more complex is another reason. So I just, the second point I see fr from the shorting uh, technology, because uh, Normally, we use uh, two uh, uh, ways. It's uh, one is uh, sensor-based shorting technology, and, this, and the, also we use the uh, uh, gravity concentration method to do the shorting. And I, I think it's the most, uh, in the future, most important is uh, we use the, uh, the technologies that uh, can be uh, improved more uh, used for more types of ore. Currently, some special ore uh, is suitable or successfully used in the shorting uh, process. In the future, I think is uh, for, for example, the X-ray shorters will be play better uh, role in the will be sure uh, has sure uh, some more uh, advantages. This and uh, also in the uh, third point is uh, in the future, the digitalization of the mineral processor. We need uh, for the sensor based uh, shorting technology will be uh, display uh, more advantage, it's a better performed. I think today, from the today, uh, some 
presentation showed some uh, XR, T, XRF, and uh, 3D images. Those uh, information can combine together. They, those will can be more uh, digital information. And then, uh, then we can make the mirror procession more uh, accurate. Accurate and more uh, better control. So in the for the uh, shortage of the waste, uh, all the waste piles uh, that in this area uh, shorting or uh, precision cancer uh, pre concentration uh, will show uh, higher challenges because of the fine uh, particle size, uh, more uh, lower grade. So I think in the future is uh, uh, for the X uh, X ray uh, shorter should be improved and the uh, uh, size particle size uh, limitation make uh, uh, can show uh, can use the for the for the finer particle size. Also the uh, throughput can be improved, make higher uh, throughput. Thank you very much. This is the point I want to mention. Thank you, Jason. And uh, now I would like to get uh, the comments from Paul McDonald, please. Great. Hey, thanks very much for inviting me. It's great. It's a really great opportunity for me to to listen to the uh, the, the other teams actually talking about specifically the OR Explorer scanner. Uh, here in uh, in Berlin, we've been uh, we we used the OR Explorer scanner last year as part of a five month part of a bigger project. Uh, we're we're looking at a like a five year technology program. We're actually looking at various um, uh, technologies and seeing how we can actually include these and uh, and help our geologists to to log and then assist them in the logging process and sample process. But it's it's really great. A lot of the things that the guys identified in Bulgaria, Cyprus, uh, Greece, and and Sweden, elsewhere in Sweden, we 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 identified those too. But uh, now is the next thing for us is actually is we we face some challenges and how we're going to incorporate that into our workflow and. And certain things like that, you know, maybe commer you know, to commercialize it. And uh, it was really great to hear some of the stuff from Ismo at the, at the very last presentation. Um, and he was identifying some of the, you know, some of the, the, the these impacts and, and things that we have to kind of look at. I mean, from my perspective, one of the hardest things is going to be trying to, uh, you know, get the fusion through the company of technologies like this. You know, uh, people's uh, people are. It might be it might be tricky to try and get adoption where where there's not so much time to kind of to change workflows and things like that. So my my um, my idea would be would be really interesting to hear uh, other people's kind of challenges they're going to face or the envisage they're going to face for the uh, to 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 get this uh, adopted uh, by their by their teams broadly. That'd be that'd be my view anyway. Thanks very much again. Thank you, Paul. Um, Carmen Bogdanov, uh, are, I guess you are, are there. Uh, uh, are you on a field trip in a somewhere? Yes, 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 I found. <clears throat> uh, thank you first for inviting me to the um, expert panel members. So in my point of view, uh, the XMind project presents uh, a new application that could improve the efficiency uh, of, and of exploration and mining operations. Uh, the drill core scanner, in fact, presents 3D mineralogy in real time, which is very important for the geologist uh, that could have during the drilling uh, and processing the real mineralogy. And also, uh, it could help structural geology in directional drilling, uh, oriented drilling, uh, because, for example, if you have copper porphyry system, we have three type of veins, A, early veins, B, uh, the main copper rich veins, and late D veins that are uh, pyrite rich. So you could trace all these type of veins and uh, know in what part are you in the system when you, uh, you prospect for copper. Um, Another thing is uh, that uh, if uh, this scanner is improved, uh, this could uh, help for searching for gold, platinum group elements and critical metals. Um, that is new excellent opportunity for exploration. Um, 
Speaking about the sorting system, uh, it uh, helps uh, to efficiently separate waste for uh, the ore and also reduce consumption of energy. Another important application of this system is that you could separate high density particles like gold, like platinum group elements, like tin, etc., from low density medium uh, like rocks and other minerals. So this is also very important uh, thing for the future uh, exploration. A few, few words about the exploration. What is the future of exploration? So thinking, uh, talking about exploration, this is a probabilistic business because it requires many shots on a goal. If I could say so, using the football terminology, you do many attempts until you find deposit. So. Uh, Using these new technologies will reduce these uh, shots to find a new goal, new deposit. Also, uh, these new technologies will help to make the decisions quickly because we have target generation and target evaluation. So this could help to make this decision and to reduce the time for uh, taking a good decision. Also, if we uh, have a look about the new discoveries during last 20 years, we'll see that the new valuable deposits a uh, very low number that has been discovered during last 10 years, for example. So this is a high challenge for exploration geologists. And on the other hand, so we are focusing on mineral deposits with low grade and uh, taking into account uh, the strong uh, demands uh, for mineral resources. In this respect, the role of government is changing, but there is, in many cases, many governments, there is uh, increasing focus on trendy science, such as climate change. Uh, also, another thing is lack or lack of desire to finance to uh, the, the higher education because on the other hand there are new expectations from research institutes and universities we need to bring this new technology to the students and to prepare them with more practical approach to be prepared for the industry uh, as a, my final remark is that uh, as Higgs my project show for me uh, that uh, when we work more collaboratively, this is uh, this increases our prob probability of success in the mining and exploration industry, and this could help to create a new exploration space through innovation. Thank you for your attention. That's for me. Thank you, Karen, <clears throat> for your comments. And uh, then we have Nikolai Ar Arvanitidis. Um, Hello, um, everyone. Um, Hello, Nikos. Uh, could you please give your comments? Yeah, thank you, Janne. Um, first of all, uh, well done by all presenters. Very nice uh, presentations by all. Um, I would also stay with exploration a little bit. Um, um, I find that you know, mineral exploration is a fascinating and exciting uh, um, uh, activity, um, particularly for for me, which uh, I'm an economic geologist. And um, uh, but at the same time, uh, exploration is a risky business, and that's because it brings uh, high expend expenditures. Uh, it takes time to find uh, a potentially exploitable resource. And uh, going back to brownfields uh, today, you might need to go deeper. That means that uh, uh, your costs are getting even more higher. Uh, um, and uh, uh, what, but what I find very interesting uh, with uh, um, with uh, this technology, expect of uh, providing very fast um, and and multi data uh, uh, capacity and capability is. Uh, um, the broadness of uh, the composition um, of the geochemical analysis, which in a very early stage, you uh, might give you um, 
the opportunity to uh, see what we, which else with other commodities except of the ones you are targeting. For example, if you're targeting a nickel magmati sulfide or a copper sulfide uh, uh, deposit, at the same time you get information about cobalt. Uh, um, and when you target an iron oxide apatite uh, uh, deposit, uh, uh, at the same time you get information about rare earth elements. Uh, uh, and that is very uh, um, valuable uh, at this stage as we all, you know, talk about critical minerals, we talk about battery minerals, we talk about magnet minerals. Uh, it's very important to, to, when you start exploring in a green field, to have at the very early stage information uh, uh, about the potential commodities that are present uh, in, in, uh, in the area, except of the ones you you actually uh, um, uh, um, explored earlier. I mean, uh, um, you get into um, uh, um, a, a, a need to refine the mineral system, to refine the model of classical uh, um, deposits, uh, um, mineral belts that we know, uh, um, by actually looking at uh, at a new exploration uh, potential in terms of uh, any critical uh, uh, minerals that may be associated as byproducts along with the primarily extracted uh, commodities, uh, and of course, um, um, uh, this is uh, also about a resource uh, efficient exploration uh, uh, way uh, when you actually uh, approach. Uh, your target more comprehensively. Uh, you approach your target from all the commodities present. So when you plan uh, your um, uh, next stage of of, uh, of um, approach of feasibility study of uh, of mining plan, you take into account uh, all the commodities that have uh, that potentially can be extracted uh, for for, uh, for from a deposit. So that's for me. It's it's. Um, it's very important. It's a very crucial uh, uh, um, thing, information you um, get from from this tool, and uh, um, in uh, in a time when uh, the um, demand of of critical materials is growing very fast, we need to approach uh, uh, the uh, the ore deposits from this point of view, as we know that uh, critical most of the critical minerals they don't form their own deposits. They found as byproducts associated with uh, uh, major major deposits, nickel deposits, copper deposits, base metal deposits, iron deposits, so on. Thank you, Nikos. And uh, the time is is running, so we have uh, about three minutes left uh, for for the expert panel discussion. But uh, I have understood from the comments that. Uh, uh, these kind of projects uh, like X-Mine are, are important, and uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, there are a lot of practical things to be taken into account when uh, we develop this uh, new type of technology, and uh, then we, when we adopt this type of new technology. And uh, it does not mean, for example, that the real core scanner is going to replace the ge geologist, but uh, the geologist is, is needed still, but it's going to be an iterative process, and uh, then uh, uh, yeah, the geologist is kind of, kind of uh, speaking with the, with the uh, analysis software of the real core scanner and uh, improving all the time the, the model. And uh, uh, I believe that we are in the very beginning uh, of uh, the understanding of uh, how to use uh, to best use this new type of new technology. And uh, and uh, <clears throat> we don't know exactly where this will lead, but. Uh, I guess more research would be needed for that and the more practical work on the field. But uh, does anybody have uh, any any very short comments right right now? I have, may I have a few words? Uh, <laughs> Who was that? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I would like to, to mention that we are now in the era of digital geologists and uh, there, uh, but uh, this uh, 
do not replace the fuel geology. So we need strong need of fuel geology because you, if you don't have geological model, you don't have good resource model. So this is important. Uh, without geology, there is no future for exploration. Uh, of course, uh, there are high uh, demands for the geologists and uh, new qualification, new digital era for geologists. The geologists uh, have to know 3D software, uh, methods of determining minerals, new technologies, etc., etc. So that's my comment on it. Right. Thank you. Uh, was there any other comment? I see that Mark uh, is raising his hand. Well, very, very, sim very simply, um, I think without geologists, we don't have a future in Europe. Um, I think we, you know, the, the world has changed so much and is changing so fast. And we, we have to remember that our, our small part corner of this globe with its approximately 500 million people <clears throat> is rapidly being overtaken by an enormous middle class in Asia. If we are to, to be productive, if we are still to be able to produce and to make things and to have value chains in Europe, we need to have the same competence and even more competence and even more resources for geology in Europe. So absolutely geology has a future. It's neglected as far as I'm concerned. We need to put more resources and more effort into developing our own geology much more effectively. And again, I thank you for your efforts in this project. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Stefan, I think that we are now at about uh, 4 p.m. So uh, I guess we need to close the expert panel discussion. So I thank you all expert panelists uh, for, for the very interesting discussion. and. And uh, I think now we are at the very end of this uh, of this event, and I will give some closing words and conclusions. So this is uh, um, X mine essential development, and uh, this uh, is leading to new sensor products for a variety of markets. Uh, we have de developed some new measurement methods and then for the prototypes they are also we have we're going to have a new prototypes uh, sorry not no, not no new prototypes but new products on you, the Janne, i think you're sharing you're not sharing your screen if mm. that's what you're thinking let me check maybe i have to reshare it my computers Showed that it it was sharing, but uh, maybe it wasn't wasn't okay. Yeah, there you are. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. So, for the prototypes, uh, they have are already new products on the market, and the new business models uh, based on these prototypes and hardware and uh, service models. And uh, then we have the pilots. And uh, we have shown here the new analysis and modeling methods, uh, which will lead to, to new workflows, for example, to, for geologists. And uh, that is kind of a uh, uh, the social on the social side of things. And uh, then we are going to have new service based business models. And last but not least, all of this uh, is leading to environmental health and safety impacts. And. Uh, OK, so I would like to thank you all speakers, expert panelists and and uh, attendees. And uh, I would also like to thank the uh, European Commission for, for funding uh, its mine project and uh, for your continuous support and flexibility uh, through this uh, difficult time with COVID and everything. And I would like to thank uh, its mine partners for the hard work and excellent cooperation during the project. And uh, also, despite COVID, you have been able to to progress with the work in the XMI project. And uh, then I would like to thank uh, Stefan and uh, Maria for running the event together with me. And uh, with this said, um, okay, I would like to remind you that we will have the presentations and recordings 
uh, of the event on the XMI website. So if you want to uh, go back to some of the of these topics, uh, you have the uh, opportunity for that. Um, and I think we are closing the meeting now. And thank you for participating and have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful summer and hopefully see you in, in real life soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Time to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye all. Bye bye. Thank you for much. See you soon.